Peru, República del Peru. Part 3. Peru 3 Table of Contents. All about Peru. With visiting and touring information, geography, history, attractions, and other points of interest. This is part 3 about other points of interest in Peru, including Machu Picchu, Arequipa, Pisco, and the Nazca Lines. Dr. Sydney Socloth. Dr. Sydney22 at gmail.com. 2023. Narration by Dr. Sydney Socloth. Zoe Phonemes. And Nathan Coltov. For a complete discussion of YouTube navigation, please go to tiny.one slash yt navigator. Peru, part three. Machu Picchu, Arequipa, Pisco, and the Nazca Lines. Machu Picchu is a pre-Columbian 15th century Inca site located 2,430 meters, or 7,970 feet, above sea level. It is one of the most important archaeological sites in South America, one of the most visited tourist attractions in all of Latin America, and the most visited tourist attraction in Peru. Machu Picchu is 50 miles, or 80 kilometers northwest of Cusco. Machu Picchu is situated on a mountain ridge above the Urubamba Valley in Peru, which is 80 kilometers, or 50 miles, northwest of Cusco and through which the Urubamba River flows. This shows the location of Machu Picchu with respect to Lima and Cusco. The nearest town to Machu Picchu is Aguascalientes. Machu Picchu is high up in the Andes Mountains of Peru. The sacred valley of the Incas or Urubamba Valley is a valley in the Andes of Peru, close to the Inca capital of Cusco and below the ancient sacred city of Machu Picchu and was the heartland of the Inca Empire. This is the train route from Cusco to Machu Picchu Pueblo. Aguascalientes is the nearest town to Machu Picchu. The Urubamba Valley is fed by numerous rivers which descend through adjoining valleys and gorges and contains numerous archaeological remains and villages. The Incas appreciated the valley due to its special geographical and climatic qualities. It was one of the empire's main points for the extraction of natural wealth and one of the most important areas for maize production in Peru. Machu Picchu is situated above a loop of the Urubamba River, which surrounds the site on three sides with cliffs dropping vertically for 450 meters, or 1,480 feet, to the river at their base. The location of the city was a military secret, and its deep precipices and steep mountains provided excellent natural defenses. The Inca Bridge, an Inca rope bridge across the Urubamba River, provided a secret entrance for the Inca army. Another Inca bridge was built to the west of Machu Picchu, the Tree Trunk Bridge, at a location where a gap occurs in the cliff that measures 6 meters or 20 feet. It could be bridged by two tree trunks, but with the trees removed, there was 570 meter, or 1,870 feet fall to the base of the cliffs. The ancient city sits in a saddle between the two mountains Machu Picchu and Huayna Picchu, with a commanding view down two valleys and a nearly impassable mountain at its back. It has a water supply from springs that cannot be blocked easily, and enough land to grow food for about four times as many people as ever lived there. The hillsides leading to it have been terraced not only to provide more farmland to grow crops, but to steepen the slopes that invaders would have to ascend. 
the terraces reduced soil erosion and protected against landslides. Most archaeologists believe that Machu Picchu was built as an estate for the Inca Emperor Pachacuti. 1438-1472 Often referred to as the lost city of the Incas, it is perhaps the most familiar icon of the Inca world. Machu Picchu means Old Peak in the local language of today. The Incas started building the estate around 1400 AD, but abandoned it as an official site for the Inca rulers a century later at the time of the Spanish conquest. Although known locally, it was unknown to the outside world before being brought to international attention in 1911 by the American historian and professor of history at Yale University, Hiram Bingham. Since then, Machu Picchu has become an important tourist attraction. Most of the outlying buildings have been reconstructed in order to give tourists a better idea of what the structures originally looked like. By 1976, 30% of Machu Picchu had been restored. The restoration work continues to this day. Peru Rail currently offers only three departures a day to Machu Picchu from the station in Poroy. Most of the trains to Machu Picchu depart from Alante Tembo and not Poroy. This is a Peru Rail train from Poroy to Machu Picchu. From the train station at Aguas Calientes, there is a bus up to the ruins at Machu Picchu. This is the Pueblo train station at Aguas Calientes. This shows the location of the Pueblo train station at Aguas Calientes. Since the site was never known to the Spanish during their conquest, it is highly significant as a relatively intact cultural site. Machu Picchu was declared a Peruvian historical sanctuary in 1981 and a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1983. Machu Picchu was built in the classical Inca style, with polished dry stone walls without mortar. Its three primary buildings are the Intihuatana, the Temple of the Sun, and the Room of the Three Windows. These are located in what is known by archaeologists as the sacred district of Machu Picchu. This shows the location of the Intihuatana, the Temple of the Sun, and the Room of the Three Windows. This is a map of the area of Machu Picchu. The Sun Temple was dedicated to the solar god and patron Incendiati, Inti. Accessible to only the priests and Inca emperor. The Sapa Inca, the temple was an important observatory in which the measurement of the solstices was undertaken. A carved bowl de alta in the center of the structure supported the animal sacrifices which provided organs for the priests to make their predictions. Beneath the sun temple is a cavernous room named the royal tomb. Here the nobles, and maybe the Sapa Inca himself, were laid to rest in their mummified state. The Intihuatana, Osuntai, is believed to have been designed as an astronomic clock or calendar by the Incas. The Intihuatana stone is one of many ritual stones in South America. These stones are arranged to point directly at the sun during the winter solstice. It is believed that it was built as an astronomical clock or calendar. Erected overlooking the mine plaza is the Temple of the Three Windows. Unlike the enclosed and exclusive Sun Temple, this structure has three walls, while the fourth is an open space obstructed only by columns to support the roof. The Temple of Three Windows receives its name from the Three Windows pictured here in the center, in the main face of the building. Like many of the doors and windows at Machu Picchu, the windows are of a trapezoidal shape. The History of Machu Picchu Machu Picchu was built around 1450, 
at the height of the Inca Empire. It was abandoned just over 100 years later, in 1572, as a result of the Spanish conquest. In July 1911, Hiram Bingham, a historian and lecturer at Yale University, announced the discovery of Machu Picchu. He had been searching for the city of Vilcabamba, the last Inca refuge during the Spanish conquest. Bingham had worked for years in previous trips and explorations. A local 11-year-old Quechua boy led Bingham up to Machu Picchu. He found that some Quechuas still lived in the original structures at Machu Picchu. Bingham started archaeological studies and completed a survey of the area. Much of the work was accomplished by the Peruvian expedition of 1912. Under the auspices of Yale University and the National Geographic Society. Bingham called the complex the Lost City of the Inca, which was the title of his first book. Bingham made several more trips and conducted excavations on the site through 1915, collecting various artifacts which he took back to Yale. He wrote a number of books and articles about the discovery of Machu Picchu. The site received significant publicity after the National Geographic Society devoted its entire April 1913 issue to Machu Picchu. This is the April 1913 issue of the National Geographic Society. Hiram Bingham theorized that the complex was the traditional birthplace of the Inquant Virgins of the Suns. More recent research by scholars such as John Howell and Rowe and Richard Bugay has convinced most archaeologists that Machu Picchu was an estate of the Inca Emperor Pachacuti. And there is evidence that the site was selected because of its position relative to sacred landscape features such as its mountains which are purported to be in alignment with key astronomical events important to the Incas. Although the citadel is located only about 50 miles 80 kilometers from Cusco, the Inca capital, the Spanish never found it and consequently did not plunder or destroy it, as they did many other sites. Over the centuries, the surrounding jungle grew over much of the site, and few outsiders knew of its existence. What was Machu Picchu? A sacred religious site? A settlement built to control the economy of conquered regions? A prison for those who had committed heinous crimes against Inca society? An agricultural testing station? Or an abode for the deities? Or for the coronation of kings? The Incas rising from obscurity in Peru's Cusco Valley during the 13th century. A royal Inca dynasty charmed, bribed, intimidated, or conquered its rivals to create the largest pre-Columbian empire in the New World. Over a span of just 100 years, the Inca Empi grew into a vast Empi. The Incas were able to build a vast empire by demanding loyalty from conquered people. At the height of the Apui, the Inca empire was 2,500 miles long, 500 miles wide, and home to 12 million people. The Incan Empire was located on the western side of South America. Although the empire was huge, it can be easily divided into three geographical regions, mountains, jungle, and desert. The administrative, political and military center of the MP was located in Casco in modern-day Peru. The Inca civilization arose in the highlands of Peru sometime in the early 13th century. From 1438 to 1533, the Incas used a variety of methods, from conquest to peaceful assimilation, 
to incorporate a large portion of Western South America into a state comparable to the historical empires of Europe and Asia. The term Inca meant ruler or lord in Quechua and was used to refer to the ruling class or the ruling family in the empire. The Spanish adopted the term as an ethnic term referring to all subjects of the empire rather than simply the ruling class. Inca means emperor. Sapa Inca means the only emperor. The Sapa Inca ruled everything and owned everything. The Inca was not just a ruler. The Inca was believed to be a direct descendant of the sun god, Inti. The Inca leadership encouraged the worship of Inti, the sun. The Incas considered their king, the Sapa Inca, to be the child of the sun, and he was all-powerful. Spanish conquistadors led by Francisco Pizarro and his brothers explored south from what is today Panama reaching Inca territory by 1526. The conquistadors saw they had reached a wealthy land with prospects of great treasure. And after one more expedition in 1529, Pizarro traveled to Spain and received royal approval to conquer the region and be its viceroy. This approval was received as detailed in the following quote. In July 1529 the Queen of Spain signed a charter allowing Pizarro to conquer the Incas. Pizarro was named governor and captain of all conquests in Peru, or New Castile, as the Spanish now called the land. Pizarro did not have a formidable force. He had only 168 men, one cannon and 27 horses. However, Unrest among newly conquered territories, and perhaps more importantly, smallpox, which had spread from Central America, had considerably weakened the empire. The Spanish horsemen had great technological superiority over the Inca forces. The traditional mode of battle in the Andes was a kind of siege warfare where large numbers of usually reluctant draftees were sent to overwhelm opponents. The Spaniards had developed one of the finest military machines in the pre-modern world. Tactics learned in their centuries-long fight against Moorish kingdoms in Iberia. Along with this tactical and material superiority, the Spaniards also had acquired tens of thousands of native allies who sought to end the Inca control of their territories. One of the main events in the conquest of the Incan Empire was the death of Atahualpa, the last Sapa Inca in 1533. In 1572, the last Inca stronghold was conquered, and the last ruler was captured and executed. This ended resistance to the Spanish conquest. After the fall of the Inca Empire many aspects of Inca culture were systematically destroyed, including their sophisticated farming system, known as the vertical archipelago model of agriculture. The Spaniards used the Incamita, or mandatory public service system to literally work the people to death. One member of each family was forced to work in the gold and silver mines, the foremost of which was the huge silver mine at Potosi. When a family member died, which would usually happen within a year or two, the family would be required to send a replacement. The effects of smallpox were even more devastating. Beginning in Colombia, Smallpox spread rapidly even before the Spanish invaders first arrived in the Inca Empi. Within a few years smallpox claimed an estimated 60% to 94% of the Inca population. Cusco The historic city of Cusco, which is also spelled Cusco, is the famed capital of the ancient Inca Empire, and serves as a mecca for travelers in the modern age. 
Though Cusco was the center of the Inca Empire for a relatively short time, relics and imprints from the great civilization remain to this day. Though Cusco was the center of the Inca Empire for a relatively short time, relics and imprints from the great civilization remain to this day. Cusco is the capital of the Cusco region as well as the Cusco province. Its elevation is around 11,200 feet or 3,400 meters. In the heart of the Andes Mountains. This is a map of the conquest of the Inca Empire. Francisco Pizarro arrived in Cusco in 1534 and renamed it the very noble and great city of Cusco. The many buildings constructed after the Hispanic invasion have a mix too of Spanish influence with Inca indigenous architecture. The Spanish destroyed many Inca buildings, temples and palaces, and used the remaining walls as bases for the construction of a new city. Cusco was the center for the Spanish colonization and spread of Christianity in the Andean world. It became very prosperous thanks to agriculture, cattle raising, and mining, as well as its trade with Spain. The Spanish colonists constructed many churches and convents, as well as a cathedral, university and archbishopric. Spanish buildings were often based on the massive stone walls built by the Inca. Cusco was the site of the historic capital of the Inca MP and was declared a World Heritage Site in 1983 by UNESCO. Cusco is a Majo tourist destination and receives almost 2 million visitors a year. It is designated as the historical capital of Peru by the Constitution of Peru. This is a map of the historic Zinta of Cusco. Many of the points of interest in Cusco are near the main plaza, the Plaza de Armas. This is a view of the Plaza de Armas showing the Cathedral and the Iglesia de la Compañía de Jesús, or Company of Jesus Church. This is another view of the Plaza de Armas showing the Cathedral and the Iglesia de la Compañía de Jesús. The Iglesia de la Compañía de Jesús dates from the latter part of the 16th century when the Jesuits built it. Construction of the famous landmark Cathedral of Cusco began in 1559 and took almost an entire century until it was finally completed. It contains a wealth of exceptional colonial art in particular. The sacristy is many historical paintings of past bishops. The Coricanca Temple was the most important temple in the Inca Empi. Dedicated primarily to Inti. The Sun God. Once one of the most important of all the Inca landmarks in Cusco. All that remains of it are its foundations that underlie the Iglesia de Santo Domingo. This underlying Inca structure now forms the base of the Iglesia de Santo Domingo, which has suffered at the hands of Peruvian earthquakes over the years, particularly in 1650 and again in 1950. The colonial structure suffered much damage but the Inca walls remain largely intact. The cloister is the best place to view what is left of the Coracancha Temple. Often referred to as simply La Merced, the Templo e Convento de La Merced is an especially important colonial church, being founded as a convent in 1542. Although completely destroyed during the 1650 earthquake, it was soon rebuilt. The church contains a large number of gold artifacts. The Archbishop's Palace has various religious artworks and artifacts on display. The present-day building of the Archbishop's Palace stands on the foundations that once supported the Palace of the Inca Roca, an emperor of the Inca Kingdom. 
Thaksawaman is an Incan citadel that stands high above the northern outskirts of Cusco. It is just one-fifth of its original size. Since much of it was dismantled by conquering Spaniards, who used the site as a quarry, taking the stonework to build their houses. A major battle against the Spanish conquest took place here in 1536, with the Incas recapturing the fortress, before being overthrown again. Fuyupalamerca is an archaeological site along the Inca Trail in the Urubamba Valley of Peru. Due to its altitude of roughly 3,200 meters, it is known as La Ciuta Entre la Niebla, or the city above the clouds. This shows the location of Fuyupalamerca along the Inca Trail. In total, the Fuyupalamerca complex has 15 different buildings as well as two plazas, ceremonial baths and a number of observation areas that hang rather precariously from the side. Fuyupalamerca is frequently surrounded by low cloud formations, making it appear to float and seem rather magical. Oraki Paw The dazzling white facades and colonial architecture of Arequipa are unique and wonderful. This is El Misti Volcano overlooking the city of Arequipa. Arequipa is located in the southwestern part of Peru. 1,000 km. 0600 miles from Lima, Arequipa is the second largest city of Peru and with a population of almost one million. It is the largest city in the Peruvian Andes. Oraki is often used as the gateway city for visits to Cusco and Machu Picchu, as well as Puno on Lake Titicaca. El Misti, also known as Guaguapulina, is a volcano near Oraki Paw. El Misti has a seasonally snow-capped symmetrical cone. El Misti stands at 5,822 meters, or 19,100 feet, above sea level, and its last eruption was in 1985. Oraquipua is at an altitude of 2,335 meters or 7,660 feet, above sea level in a mountainous desert in the western Andes at the foot of the El Misti volcano. Arequipa has many buildings built of Silla, a pearly white volcanic rock, from which it gets the nickname La Ciudad Blanca, o oh the White City. The historic Zinta of Arequipa was named a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2000 in recognition of its architecture and historical integrity. Soon after its founding, Oraquipa became a major commercial hub of southern Peru, accumulating commercial and administrative functions in times of the Viceroyalty of Peru. It was an important economic hub of southern Peru. In recent decades Oraquipa has become an important industrial and commercial center in Peru, now being the second most industrialized city in Peru. It has close trade ties with Chile, Bolivia and Brazil, and has links with the port of Matarani. This is a map of the historic Zinta of Arequipa, centered around the Plaza de Armas. The Plaza de Armas of Arequipa is one of the most beautiful in Peru. On the north side of the plaza is the impressive, twin-towered cathedral founded in 1612, and largely rebuilt in the 19th century, having been repeatedly damaged by earthquakes and fire. Inside the cathedral are a fine Belgian organ and elaborately carved wooden pulpit. The Basilica Cathedral of Araquipa, Basilica Catedral, in Spanish, 
is the most important Catholic church of the city and also of the larger Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Araki Pa. The cathedral is also considered one of Peru's most unusual and famous colonial cathedrals. La Catedral is actually the only cathedral in the whole of Peru to stretch the entire length of a plaza. And also it is only one of some 100 basilicas permitted to fly the Vatican flag. The plaza is surrounded on its other three sides by colonial arcaded buildings with many cafes and restaurants. These are the colonial arcaded buildings adjacent to and facing across from the cathedral. These are colonial arcaded buildings on the Plaza de Armas. The Monastery of Santa Catalina, or Monasterio de Santa Catalina, is considered a masterpiece of colonial architecture. This monastery is a large complex of rooms, picturesque plazas, ornate fountains and a maze of narrow, cobblestone streets. The Monasterio de Santa Catalina was opened to the public in 1970 after 400 years as a cloister. The convent is a complete miniature walled colonial town in the middle of the city. There are flower-filled gardens, spacious patios, granite fountains as well as arches and narrow streets. The tile-roofed buildings are painted in traditional white, brown and blue. The monastery is located about two blocks north of the Plaza de Armas in the cathedral. The Monasterio de Catalina is a cloistered convent built in 1580 and was enlarged in the 17th century. This very large monastery has vividly painted walls. There are approximately 20 nuns currently living in the northern corner of the complex which once housed up to 500. The rest of the monastery is open to the public. The founder of the monastery was a rich widow, Maria de Guzman. The tradition of the time indicated that the second son or daughter of a family would enter religious service, and the convent accepted only women from high-class Spanish families. Each nun at Santa Catalina had between one and four servants or slaves, and the nuns invited musicians to perform in the convent, gave parties and generally lived a lavish lifestyle. Each family paid a dowry at their daughter's entrance to the convent, although it was possible for poorer nuns to enter the convent without paying a dowry. The Museo Sanctuarius Andinus is home to the ice maiden Juanita a young Inca girl that was sacrificed to the Inca gods at the top of Mount Empato in the late 1400s. She was discovered, almost perfectly preserved in ice in 1995. The Museo Sanctuarius Andinus is small, and entirely dedicated to Juanita and other similar discoveries near Oroquipa. The Museo Sanctuarius Andinus is on the south side of the Plaza de Armas. The famous mummy Juanita, the Ice Princess, had been well preserved in ice for more than 500 years before volcanic activity melted the surrounding snow. This Inca girl, tightly wrapped in textiles, must have been ritually sacrificed and buried on the mountain peak. Juanita was discovered on Mount Ampato in southern Peru in 1995 by anthropologist Johann Reinhardt. Reinhardt found a bundle inside the crater that had fallen from an Inca site on the summit. To his astonishment, the bundle turned out to contain the frozen body of a young girl. Reinhardt also found many items that had been left as offerings to the Inca gods strewn about the mountain slope down which the body had fallen. Juanita has been on display in the Catholic University's Museum of Andean Sanctuaries, or Museo Sanctuarius Andinus, in Oroquipa almost continuously since 1996.
The body caused a sensation in the scientific world due to its well-preserved condition in 1995. Time magazine chose it as one of the world's top 10 discoveries. Oraki Paw is a good place for shopping. The products are more expensive than in other parts of Peru, but the quality is better. This is definitely the place to buy alpaca products. The materials are purer, with no synthetics added, and the designs are nicer whether you're looking for blankets, ponchos, scarves, shawls, or sweaters. A good place to shop for alpaca products is the Pasaje Catedral, the pedestrian mall located behind the cathedral. For other crafts, visit the Mercado de Artesania, a general market with rows of stalls in the Old Town Jail located next to the Plazula de San Francisco in general. Store owners and market vendors expect a little haggling over the price. The Plaza de San Francisco is just three blocks north of the Cathedral and Plaza de Armas. This is the Plaza de San Francisco. Calca Canyon is a canyon of the Calca River in southern Peru. It is more than twice as deep as the Grand Canyon in the United States at 3,270 meters, or 10,725 feet. Although the canyon's walls are not as vertical as those of the Grand Canyon. This shows the location of some of the principal points of interest in southern Peru in the area of Oraki Pa. Calca Canyon is located about 100 miles, or 160 kilometers, northwest of Oraki Pa. The Calca Canyon is Peru's third most visited tourist destination with about 120,000 visitors annually. The Calca Valley is a colorful Andean valley with towns founded in Spanish colonial times, and still inhabited by people of the Calaguas and the Cabanas cultures. The local people still maintain ancestral traditions and continue to cultivate the Prianca steppe terraces. Beautiful and spoiled Andean villages line both sides of the canyon, as well as seeing the many traditional Prianca agricultural terraces which line the steep valley sides. Although the Grand Canyon in Arizona is a very deep canyon, it is not Earth's deepest. That distinction belongs to Cotahuasa Canyon in southwestern Peru. Cotahuasa Canyon is even deeper than Colca Canyon with a depth of 3,354 meters. Oh, 11,000 feet. That is of a twice the depth of the Grand Canyon. Matarani is a major port on the southern coast of Peru. It is the closest port to Oraki Pa. The port of Matarani is about 50 miles, or 80 kilometers from Oraki Pa. Matarani is one of the three ports which comprise the Peruvian termini of the Interoceanic Highway. It is an important element in the plan between the governments of Peru and Brazil for an Atlantic Pacific corridor between the two nations. This is the port of Matarani. Pisco is an entrancing fishing village at the edge of the desert, where it rains only once every 25 years. Nearby are the Nazca Lines. These are geoglyphs carved into the desert floor by pre-Incan societies. There are over 300 drawings that have remained virtually undamaged through the centuries. Pisco is about 150 miles or 200 kilometers south of Lima. Originally the Villa of Pisco was founded in 1640. Close to the indigenous emplacement of the same name, Pisco is a Quechua word that means bird. Pisco originally prospered because of its nearby vineyards and is the namesake of the Peruvian grape liquo. Pisco Pisco has a population of 120,000. This is the center of Pisco, 
with the Plaza de Armas and the location of the San Clemente Cathedral. Pisco was very near the epicenter of the devastating 8.0 magnitude earthquake which struck south-central Peru in 2007. It was reported that 80% of the city was destroyed. This included the San Clement Cathedral of Pisco, in which a mass was occurring at the time of the earthquake. As many as 100 deaths were reported within the cathedral. This is the area around the Plaza de Armas after the devastation of the 2007 earthquake. Pisco is still recovering from the damage done during the earthquake. Nesca Lines The Nazca Lines are a series of ancient geoglyphs located in the Nazca Desert in southern Peru. The Nazca Lines were designated UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1994. The high and arid Nazca Desert Plateau is about 100 miles, or 160 kilometers southeast of Pisco, and 400 kilometers south of Lima. This shows the location of the Nazca Lines again with respect to Pisco. Scholars believe the Nazca Lines were created by the Nazca culture between 400 and 650 AD. The hundreds of individual figures range in complexity from simple lines to stylized hummingbirds, spiders, monkeys, fish, sharks, orcas, llamas, and lizards. When the gravel is removed, it leaves a shallow trough ranging from 4 to 6 inches, or 10 to 15 centimeters deep, and the light-colored earth beneath shows in lines of sharply contrasting color and tone. This sublayer contains high amounts of lime which with the morning mist hardens forming a protective layer that shields the lines from winds very far preventing erosion. Hundreds of figures are simple lines or geometric shapes. More than 70 are zoomorphic designs of animals such as birds, fish, llamas, jaguars, monkeys, or human figures. Other designs include shapes such as trees and flowers. The largest figures are over 200 meters, or 660 feet across. Scholars differ in interpreting the purpose of the designs, but in general they ascribe religious significance to them. The geometric shapes could indicate the flow of water, or be connected to rituals to summon water. The spiders, birds, and plants could be fertility symbols. Other possible explanations include irrigation schemes or giant astronomical calendars. The lines have been preserved due to the dry, windless, and stable climate of the plateau and its isolation. Extremely rare changes in weather may temporarily alter the general designs. After people traveled over the area by plane in the 1930s and saw the Nazca lines from the air, anthropologists started studying them, with a focus on trying to understand how they were created. The Nazca drew several hundred simple, but huge curvilinear animal and human figures in total. The earthwork project is huge and complex. The area encompassing the lines is nearly 190 square miles, or 500 square kilometers, and the largest figures can span nearly 890 feet, or 270 meters. The Nazca Desert is one of the driest on Earth and maintains a temperature of around 25 degrees Celsius, or 77 degrees Fahrenheit all year round. The lack of wind has helped keep the lines uncovered and visible to the present day. We will next have a short video clip on the ancient mysteries of the Nazca Lines.
on a barren desert in South America is one of the greatest archaeological wonders of the world. Etched in the surface of the Pampas are hundreds of straight lines, geometric shapes, and the images of animals and birds. These are the Nazca Lines, built by the Nazca people, but why they were created has defied explanation. They were first spotted when commercial airlines began flying across the Peruvian desert in the 1920s. Passengers reported seeing mysterious primitive landing strips on the ground below. There are more than 800 uncannily straight lines, some running for many kilometers. There are spirals and other geometric shapes. Most remarkable is a desert zoo a monkey with a curled tail, a spider, and a hummingbird. Since their discovery nearly 80 years ago, the Nazca lines have inspired fantastic explanations. Notoriously, the Austrian writer Eric von Daniken claimed that they were evidence that the Earth had been visited by extraterrestrials. The lines, he said, were runways for their spacecraft. And there was more what seemed to be otherworldly evidence. More than 90% of the skulls found here have been artificially distorted. The Nazca wrapped the heads of their newborn with bands made of leather or wood. As a result, the still malleable skull grew upwards into these extraordinary alien-like shapes. Scientific study began in the 1940s with the arrival of a German mathematician and astronomer, Maria Riker. Riker believed the lines were a sophisticated astronomical calendar. In 1965, astronomer Gerald Hawkins came to Nazca, fresh from investigating Stonehenge. He used computers to check Riker's theory. Hawkins could find no connection at all between the lines and the stars. Astronomy was not the solution to the puzzle. But there is no mystery how the lines were made. The desert is covered with a layer of dark colored stones. Beneath is a lighter colored sediment. To create a line, the Nazca simply had to remove the stones on the surface in whatever patterns they wished. Similar designs had been found in Nazca cloth patterns, which were all woven from a single thread of llama wool. In a similar way, the pictures of animals created on the desert floor are all based on one line etched into the ground. It seems to have been the Nazca's proficiency as weavers that allowed them to execute pictures and designs on such a large scale. Weavers start with small designs, then scale them up on looms. The same technique could have been applied on the pampas. The line builders would have started with a sketch and then enlarged the scale with pegs and markers. The result, after just a few hours' work by the researchers, is a perfect Nazca spiral. But what were the Nazca lines for? Recent investigation has linked them directly with water. Although the animal images are the best known designs, perhaps it is the many mysteriously straight lines that hold part of the answer. It has been shown that all but one of these lines start from star-like radial points, often marked by a low mound, and every one of those points bordered rivers and tributaries. They were sacred walkways. So perhaps ritual and survival did indeed come together between the lines. Recommended videos. Recommended videos. Machu Picchu. Recommended video. Mysteries of Machu Picchu revealed modern marvels. 44 minutes. 48 seconds.
Recommended Video, Machu Picchu 101 National Geographic. 3 minutes. 33 seconds. Recommended Video, Machu Picchu, The Lost City of the Incas. 26 minutes. 2 seconds. Recommended Video, Cusco and Machu Picchu Vacation Travel Guide Expedia. 8 minutes. 13 seconds. The Empire of the Incas. This is a video about the history of the Inca civilization. 3 minutes. 9 seconds. Recommended video, Amazing Machu Picchu. Peru. 3 minutes. 28 seconds. Recommended video, Michael Palin in Machu Picchu BBC Studios. 3 minutes. 4 seconds. Recommended video, Machu Picchu in the Incan Empire, Part 1 of 2. 9 minutes. 26 seconds. Recommended video, Machu Picchu and the Incan Empire, Part 2 of 2. 9 minutes. 26 seconds. Recommended video, National Geographic Machu Picchu decoded. 2 minutes. 48 seconds. Recommended videos, Arequipa. Recommended video, Arequipa Travel Guide. 2 minutes. 43 seconds. Recommended video, Arequipa Peru the White City, Arequipa Travel Guide. 1 minute. 55 seconds. Recommended video. Historic Arequipa Peru in 4K Ultra HD. 5 minutes. 38 seconds. Recommended videos, Juanita, the Inca Ice Maiden. Recommended video, Juanita Mami Arequipa Peru, Archaeology Vacations, 2 minutes. Recommended video, is the Inca Maiden the world's best preserved mummy? 4 minutes, 24 seconds. Peru 3 Table of Contents Thanks for watching. Please watch some more of my great videos.